Hey everyone, today I'm going to be trapping levitating liquid oxygen droplets in a magnetic field. So in order to make this liquid oxygen, first I just need liquid nitrogen because liquid nitrogen boils at a lower temperature than liquid oxygen. And then I'll just flow oxygen gas into a cup floating over the top of the liquid nitrogen. So the liquid nitrogen will condense the oxygen gas into liquid oxygen. So now let's see the paramagnetism of liquid oxygen in action when I pour the liquid oxygen into a magnetic trap. So basically I just have a strong neodymium magnet underneath this polycarbonate and I'm going to pour the liquid oxygen on top of it and the droplet should be attracted to the magnet and get trapped inside of it. Whoa, it's like it's orbiting. Now wherever there's a flat plane of the magnet, the magnetic field is equal in all directions around it. But wherever there's an edge of the magnet, there's a sharp flux in the magnetic field. And so the oxygen can smoothly move through the center of the magnet, but it will basically hit a wall when it hits the edge of the magnet. There's so many physical processes involved in this dance here, it's amazing. You have the liquid oxygen droplets floating on this cloud of gaseous oxygen attracted to the magnet. And as it moves towards it, it's attracted more and more until eventually it gets pulled towards the center of the magnet. What's really cool about this is it reminds me of the attraction of gravitational bodies. So these droplets look and act almost the same way as they would act as if these were two masses in space being attracted to each other. Now you'll notice if the droplets stay there too long, then it cools the surface down enough so the light and frost effect is no longer there. And so that vapor layer goes away and so the oxygen touches the relatively hotter surface directly and so that just boils away the oxygen really fast. So you'll notice the beautiful blue color of the liquid oxygen. Ooh, look at that beautiful blue. Now the gaseous oxygen around us doesn't appear blue, but this liquid oxygen does appear blue. And the reason for this is really interesting. So in order for something to appear blue, it means it's absorbing photons in the red end of the spectrum, leaving blue there so we can see it. But the problem is the red photons have too much energy to be absorbed in one single molecule of oxygen. But if it could be absorbed in two molecules of oxygen, then it would be able to be absorbed. And statistically, that's not very likely to happen to have three bodies come together at the same time. So in the oxygen around us in the gaseous state, it's not very dense, so it's really unlikely that the three would happen at the same time. But if you can condense that oxygen into a liquid state, so everything's really packed together, and then shine some red photons on it, then it becomes a likely process where the red photon will actually hit two molecules of oxygen at the same time and be absorbed into both of them, and then it leaves the blue spectrum to be seen by us. Now the reason the oxygen can absorb this red light in the first place is the same reason why oxygen is paramagnetic. In the p orbital of oxygen atoms, there's two unpaired electrons. Now why would having two unpaired electrons make something magnetic? Well, the reason is because electrons actually have an intrinsic property called spin. Now we call it spin, but it's not as though these electrons are actually spinning around and have a spin associated with them. But it acts like that when we measure them. 
For example, if you were to shoot an electron through a magnetic field, you would see that it curves one direction. And the direction that it curved, we would say that it has a positive spin direction. And if it curved the other way, then we'd say it has a negative spin direction. And we found out there's only two spins that an electron can have. It either goes this way when you shoot it through a magnetic field or it goes the other way. And we found out there's no in-between values of this spin. It's either plus one half or minus one half, that's it. So when electrons are in the same orbital, one of those electrons always has to have a plus one half spin and the other electron always has to have a minus one half spin. And so when you have paired electrons in the shells of the atoms, those paired electrons cancel out each other's magnetic fields for the most part. And so they're not really magnetic. But if you have unpaired electrons, all of those electrons are going to have the same spin. And so that magnetic field is going to add up. So overall that atom will have a slight magnetic field to it. And what that means is that it will be attracted to a magnet. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And you can also hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video comes out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.